I'm laughing because <laughs> I, do, I just see the, see him? See that little face? How cute is that? I didn't even plan that. When I started this bike packing trip, and this is my very first bike packing trip, slashed kind of turned into bike touring. I went over everything I purchased bag wise pretty much and some bike uh, accessories like pedals, seat, and why I chose what I chose. If you want to see that, you're going to want to go back to a much earlier video. Now I've ridden and I'm done. I was gone about 51 days. I cycled for 36 of those days, 1700 miles, uh, 77,000 feet. I'm gonna now go over how everything held up, obviously. Some of it's just subjective, it's personal. These are my choices, this is what I rode with, and then I'm gonna throw in some other things that like, I love that I couldn't live without. The Revelate Spine Lock 16 liter saddlebag. Loved it, because it did not sway at all. If you want more information, go to the very beginning of the videos of this trip. Here's where we landed with this space. This whole hookup, which was working on the cell Anatomica saddle, fantastic. This is this new concept they have and it worked brilliantly. But my complaint, this was just really narrow bungee and I feel like this should be set back like an, an inch. Having these so close together just didn't seem useful. They're probably trying to sway you from bringing weight out to the end. So they have these here. I did have a bungee through here. This strap, it's not a design flaw. It's a human flaw. Some of these designs kind of need to be prepared for human flaws. I would just forget. It always fell on this side and then it would wrap around the spool right in there. So this is why I never jump on my bike and start riding it. I always, always walk with my bicycle to hear if there's any clanging or dragging. And let me just tell you that saved me multiple times because of this strap. This isn't Revelate's issue, it's my issue. I guess I would design it differently where when you're done with this, somehow you can see this because see, it kind of just fell away and visually I didn't see it. And I had stuff up here covering this clasp. So this wasn't a reminder. There it is covered and I'm like, okay, the bag's all done. It would be smart if it was yellow because at least it would show it would be like a reflector for cars. Because when you repack it, remember to loosen these to let the bag drop. A lot of times I would forget that and I'd be like, why can't I fit my stuff back in? Well, because I didn't unstitch it. I unpacked it, but I didn't let this drop to give me more space. I think at the beginning this was catching my leg or something a little bit. The biggest problem with this bag that I really struggled with when I was on logging roads and I was doing a lot of bouncing. This was touching my tire and they do have a plate under there to protect it. What was happening was over time of using the bag this dent started happening. If you squeeze that you're gonna see it's gonna drop. So what I did is I shoved a jar of peanut butter <laughs> in there and then I also, then I changed that when I finished my peanut butter to my, my cooking pot. So thank goodness they had a protective thing there. This is the number one issue with this bag, that this starts to happen. So maybe the company would say that I had too much weight at the end. I just see these bags shooting out on all these different bikes. And if that's the case, then I guess I would buy one of these other brands that lets you because I really needed the space. At some point I thought I was gonna have to go to a store and just buy another bag because I couldn't stop it from touching. Maybe if you're just on pavement, I don't think you're gonna have that issue. My Cell Anatomica saddle. It's the stiffest one they recommended since I was gonna be doing a lot of riding. One of the biggest problems with this saddle, it's a marketing problem. Every single person that saw it said, oh, you have a Brooks saddle. Not one person mentioned Cell Anatomica. This saddle is a personal mistake. One thing I will say is it did form with my body. It took me like 500 miles. And actually one guy showed me that this is to adjust it to tighten and loosen the leather. I had issues with my crotch was constantly in pain. I was doing all the right type of riding, you know, really aware when it started to hurt, like was I slouching? And I tried padded, I tried not padded. Now when I called the company, they said I don't need padded. Well, I did. So this is my analysis of this saddle. It's not meant to be ridden in my personal opinion, with my body, with drop bars. I think it needs to be with a more upright bike. It just didn't work for me, but I didn't get saddle sores. That's usually the number one issue people when they buy saddles, like, you know, no saddle sores, no saddle sores. So to its credit, I didn't get saddle sores. And by the way, the Brooks saddle had a fair amount of complaints too. And this is for people that were more on the rougher road. So I, I do feel like this is a touring saddle. You mean on pavement, more upright bike. I think it could work great for you. I can't really talk about how the chain ring worked. It just was beautiful, but then it started to lose its color a little bit. Bontrager, these platform pedals, 
freaking loved these pedals. The color also reflects for cars. It held by sandals. I've used others. Again, I go through these in detail. Beginning of the trip, I just really love the grip, the amount of grip, where it gripped. I did not go through heavy mud, so I don't know how it works with, does a mud fall through these holes? Moose Trex frame bag. When I first reviewed this, I did make a comment that maybe the reason it's only, I think $45 was because it's not gonna last longer than my tour. And as you can see, and this started happening earlier in my trip, there you go, okay. Now, look at this. So I had a lot of weight in this bag, as a lot of people do. And the reason I really struggled with the fact that this was unraveling was because I put everything in it. I loosened these and let it just drop into the frame. So the, this frame of my bicycle was actually holding the weight. And then whatever was left over on the top, I was just able to, I still was able to strap it. I don't know about waterproof. I think that that's not strong enough. You see the straps in the back? See how it's like, it's like too long. And so this would hit my leg. Can you see how loose I kept that? It's not made for this bike, so on a different bike, it might actually Velcro perfectly and not have any extra sticking out. This is the Salsa Cutthroat 2020. It didn't seem to happen on the front, but the front bar on this bicycle is wider than the rear bar. So I love that it was bright because I want to be able to see stuff. When bags are black inside, they don't work for me. Um, and it's hard to find that. So that was a smart design. Again, I was on choppy terrain a lot at the beginning. And these things are moving and shifting. So would I do this on like big dirt road trip for, you know, a long period of time? No, I wouldn't. It's too bad because it was one of the bags that it just, the way it fit and what I could put in it really worked for me. So let's check out our racer's tape. I don't want to scratch the bike. It's been baking and pressure and heat has been on this. And then when we try to peel it off, it's gonna be like impossible. It's gonna be so sticky. <gasps> Look at this. Let's see if it takes part of the bike with it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. Look at this. That's fantastic. Let's try this one. Look it. It's flawless. That's actually a good test because it's over the word. Look how fine that is. It didn't do any damage at all. I think that's probably the best test right there because the bag was really pulling right there. Look at the paint, the paint line, nothing moves, nothing. Flawless, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Cause I don't know anything about tape. So here's proof right here. And this stuff is like in a hundred degree weather. Fantastic racers tape, Blackburn fork cages. The straps were great. Couple of times I looked down, this is not a design thing, a personal human flaw, <laughs> my flaw. Again, I was really choppy sections like a lot and at the beginning of the trip and I sometimes I would look down and you know, once this was hanging off, before you start going really choppy areas, always just double check. Cause sometimes you don't take a bag off a bike, right? And it's slowly getting loose, but you don't notice. Such a slow process and you can really hurt yourself. Like this could get caught in here. Yeah cages. They didn't loosen at all. I never had to tighten. I guess I tightened them really well when I first put them on. Because <laughs> even though it hung over a lot, it worked. But I have soft stuff in here. If I had hard things in here, you know, maybe the weight would be pulling. C to Summit dry sack bags. Now this is a lightweight bag. It's four liters. Love the green color. I got these at REI. I can't review it properly because it's not like C to Summit sells these as bags to strap onto the <laughs> fork of your bike. This is just regular electrical tape and it's incredible how it did not come off this bag. I think this ripped early on in the trip. I just didn't think it would stay. So let's see how big the rip is. Okay, so it's tiny. This was just my concept to use because I obviously wanted them to be waterproof. It was just carrying my tent, so I didn't think I needed a super thick side. And I chose to get the lightweight, so maybe that's my fault. Rock Bros handlebar bags. I love the concept, the price, the reflectors, how well the, they're made. I mean, this is really strong. I did this because I packed more in it than it was designed for. But this clip wouldn't reach even if I pulled it to the end of this. And I basically rotated that the opposite way. And then this went into there because I had this bag pretty stuffed up at the beginning. It doesn't really fit in regards to the handlebar. So this, see, this is how it's supposed to go, like do that. You can see where it overlaps with the bag under it. So you kind of, I just, I mean, I had to shove it under here. It really doesn't belong. That's in the way. This really is not designed for a drop bar. It's meant for just a straight bar, you know, a mountain bike bar, in which case, you know, they're not gonna hit. 
but my options were limited and I really love this setup. So I just made it work. It was a pain when I pulled stuff out of the bag and I had to repack it in the morning because I'm trying to shove it in here and then this bars in the way. You could always just take the bag off and pack it and then put it on the bike. And it's easier that way. The problem is I didn't want to do that because I also was using this. And so I'd have to undo these straps and then I have to undo those straps. And then there's a strap around the neck. I just didn't want to do all that. I was too lazy. I don't think it was designed to do this. I think it was just my thing. I could be wrong, but this is just supposed to snap into that, right? For the bag for more support. I took one of the foam things that they're giving, you know, for here. And I just shoved the clasp through it. And then I put this one through this other side. And then I had a little foam pad because I didn't want the straps rubbing. And the only reason I feel like it wasn't designed to do that was because I really had to shove them through the foam. I felt like if it was designed for, these would have been a little wider. The problem that I had, and I do show it when it happens, it really was a little scary. And it slowly slides, you know, if it's getting moved around. So it came out and it fell. It actually hooked on to my spoke. The spoke was stronger and actually bent that. I mean, that's just incredible. That was really impressive to me. It happened while I was riding. Luckily, I was going down a hill, so very rocky spot. It jerked, made my whole bike stop. This is really strong. I mean, I can't even bend it back. I had a guy try, he couldn't either. That's how strong the spokes are on this salsa cutthroat. There was no damage at all to the bicycle. It's incredible. That is a huge design flaw. They need to change that because your boy, if that came off and it hooked and you're flying and th your bike just jar through, we could throw you right over the handlebars. I mean, it's bad, 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 bad. Rock bros, I don't know what the fix would be, but I think the bags are fantastic in regards to just how strong they were and, you know, waterproof. I didn't have a rainstorm, so I can't comment on that. So these bungees, obviously, if you're not using that little top bag, you could shove something in here. And this is how these go. You can I release the clasp as a clip. And they supply you with these foam things. I used two. I guess I could have used one to bring it up closer to the handlebar, but uh, then I would have hit this. And the price I think was phenomenal. If you don't want to deal with that, just have less in your bag. I would literally cut that off. I wouldn't even use the strap. I don't even really know how actually useful it is. Look at the cord. It rubbed through to the cable. That's 1,700 miles, so I don't know how it was wrapped or what it was pressing on. The underside of the Revelate spine lock, just to show the wear. This is from the tire hitting. See the scrape marks here? And I know this got hit by the tire as well. And if you can see this, there is a rip right here. Coming through. That may have been from my tire, I don't know. Or if it's just from pulling on it, stuffing it. Because this, there's this, there's a, you know, this is actually pretty soft. So that's not rubbing against it. All right, some of the accessories I got specific for biking. This is the, the Crank Brothers air pump. And I love that I could see the PSI. And I really just didn't use it. Uh, worked great when I did. But one thing I did learn is that if you, if I actually had a flat and I had to put a lot of air in it, these little guys are hard work. I don't mean Crank Brothers. I mean, I think just in general, these smaller pumps just take so much time and energy to just put the smallest amount of air back in your tire. I never like lost air. Now I went tubeless, it was my first time. I had 50 in the back and 40 in the front, which some people gasped at, but that's what an article a guy wrote about if you're carrying all that weight on your bike. And then I dropped it later in the ride because someone said I was nuts and that's why I was having so much vibration, which would make sense. So, I mean, this worked. I, I don't know what else I could say about it. The Wahoo Element Roam. Boy, I really wanted to love this. I mean, I did. I, I'm just gonna show you the picture of it here. It's easier. I loved the buttons. I love the options of the screen. You could just like only have miles and let's say miles per hour on the screen and they'd be really large. You could have like seven things on the screen. I never used it for a map. Um, I just uh, used it to record my ride. So I, that's it. So I can't comment on the screen, which I think most people use it for. One thing I learned wasn't until after I purchased it that I can't use it for hikes. It's specifically for cycling. 
So, which I find bizarre because Garmin you can use for both. And if they're around the same amount of money and they're both bike computers, I don't know. I just feel like I should have the Garmin because I, what am I gonna do, buy a different computer to go hiking? And what was the other thing that I discovered? You don't have service, you just finished a ride, you ended it, you go to bed. The next day you're, you start to record your ride and in the middle of the day you hit Wi-Fi and you're like, oh cool, I can load up my ride from yesterday. But you can't. I needed to end my current ride in order to upload my history. I think you can do it on Garmin. So that was a big flaw to me. Because, and a lot of it was just so people could see where I was. I was uploading it to Strava. Anyway, so those are the two things that I didn't like about it. Solar charger worked just as it did before I left for the trip. I mean, I think I used it three times. So based on the amount of usage, I would probably buy a smaller one because I just didn't use it that much. And I was able to drape it over the front of my handlebars. Great. If I was going somewhere really remote where I knew, I thought I was, but then I ended up going on pavement more. I really thought I was gonna be on dirt in the wilderness the whole trip, but since it changed, that's why I didn't end up using this as much as I needed to. It's smart that I brought it because I didn't know that was gonna happen. The Atum Tech selfie stick. Well, if you've been watching my videos, you will know that I just didn't use it. it. Has nothing to do with the product. I'm just lazy. I'm just a minimalist. Where it really was essential was the few times I set it up as a tripod. My Keen H2 sandals. They have that exclamation point at the toe. That's the heavier duty or version. I had these shoes before the cycling trip for a couple of years, I use them for hiking. I don't like ankle boots. I actually roll my ankle less in shoes like this. And people I remember on the trail and asked and they're like, you know, you really should have ankle boots on. And I'm like, you know what, why don't you just mind your own business? Because this works for me. I think it's because your foot can completely spread out. Really have, you know, in, in any shoe, even if you get the wide version of, of a closed shoe, I think it's still, it's not gonna let your foot expand the way this lets your foot expand. And for me, these worked. I love them for hiking. So as you know, I lost a shoe, my 510s. I lost one off the back of my bike. They both were backup pairs, right? Like maybe I lost one of these and I ended up with the 510s and I'm actually really, 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 really happy that it was a 510 that fell off. I actually wore the 510s for a while, they were fine. But the minute I started to have to wear these, they were my only shoes, like, no sweaty socks, foot was breathing. I liked wearing them with socks. A lot of people were like, why don't you wear them barefoot when you're cycling? Because they feel they have you have like a better grip with your foot barefoot. Well, again, it's subjective. I just liked having my foot clean in a sock. It kept it warm. It didn't get super dirty. And the minute I rode it without socks, I felt like a little bit of rubbing. And I so and again, I wore socks that had like pads under the ball of my foot and heel. As you can see, the tape, this electrical tape has held up. I, I don't know how many miles, uh, maybe. Well, gosh, didn't, didn't I lose a shoe like halfway through? So we could just say like 800 miles, 900 miles on these. I, they're great, they're great. I don't know, this shoe totally held together. And this one started to fall apart, but I'm gonna throw them out now. Yeah, I mean, I know they're not cycling shoes, but they are fantastic. Again, they were the heavier duty ones. This is one of these like non-biking items that rocked my world. The other item that rocked my world that's not a biking item is this hip pack, this fanny pack, which is like big faux pas on the fanny packs. They had one at Walmart, it's a 15 liter. First I had it strapped on the bike. And when I started hitting pavement, I was going in and out of stores. I found I was putting it on my waist because then I had to take it off, unstrap it off my bike and I had it really specific on my bike. So to take it off was a pain. And I just kept it on my waist. And you know what? I rode with it on my waist for the last, I don't know, 400 miles or something. I thought it was cool. And I put my, would put my chapsticks in the side, this front little pocket, I would put the Wahoo. And then the inside had so much room. I had like gels, things that I, of course, the gels I didn't take and tissue and I would rest my phone in here, pen, 
snacks. It was so comfortable. I love this. I'm gonna throw this one out because the inside's all worn and I'm gonna buy another one. I don't like stuff strapped all over my back and just getting sweaty and over my shoulders. I love the fanny pack. My number one, which you guys should know by now, absolute, oh my gosh, I would be so upset if I lost the one thing that I would freak out over. My Rokas. Brilliant design, which I'd mentioned years earlier. Why doesn't a company put this down near the bottom? Why do they always start it from the top? Because then the weight pushes the glass down. Why don't they put it at the bottom? And then literally, Roka, because of Strava, I had a $50 coupon because I did some accomplishment. And I go to their site, and these were just getting released, like, I don't know, a week after I was leaving for the trip or something. And then they, I just, like, got in the window somehow between just a few days, and I, I, I pre-ordered a pair. I never felt them on my face. When I would sweat, it would, it would do what it was supposed to do. It lands here, and it rolls down the side. I don't like a really strong tint. These don't make it look super purple out. This actually just enhances the actual real colors that you're seeing, which is how I like to see things. I never had to do the thing where you're always, like, pushing it up on your nose because it's sliding down, pushing it, pushing it up. I never had to touch these on my face. It's like the first time in my life I didn't have to touch shades on my face. I just love the style. I think they're sexy. I think they're cool. I love you, Roka. I think I've covered everything because the other stuff was just like this bun these bungees, which I thought well, these are from Rose. Super super strong you don't even need to like super twist it once you go through the hoop there's two kinds at the store one kind is the ends like this on each end get the one with the circle i mean i didn't once you put it through like i never even had to twist it it just they're so strong and grippy and bright you can see them i i love these so if you're looking for some kind of a strap people do the bungee i don't like the bungee with the sharp black things at the end that hook what works for one may not work for the other i gotta move on to the bicycle i literally just pulled a pricker out i forget the term for them, something heads and it's gonna seal it this is like a sign of saying you're all done so I will listen. My review of the 2020 Salsa Cutthroat Apex One. I'm just a girl who wanted to get a bike to put bags on to go into the wilderness on dirt for a month or two. And after researching a lot of bikes, this was the one I decided on. Now I think I was really attracted to the drop bar because my background is primarily road biking for the last few years. And just the shape of my body's sort of been trained to be in on a bicycle. More of that hunched over a little bit more. What started to happen is having my hand in this vertical position, it didn't feel as safe, okay, when I was bouncing and moving a lot, and having my fingers stretched like that. When I was on logging roads, you know, back roads, I needed my whole hand here, pretty much, these three. It really started to stress my hand out because again, I was constantly having to break. Obviously, I wasn't putting my hands here because I needed my hand near the brake. On a straight bar, your hand is here, and that's really comfortable. It's it's horizontal to the ground. It feels more stable. The hand is sort of just resting over the brake. It's sort of a natural position for the hand. So this really became a problem for me. My hand, I would have to be doing this. And again, again, I'm going to say this. This is based on braking a lot because you're riding on rough terrain for many hours. That was my biggest issue with the drop bar. And yes, I know you can swap out the handlebars on bikes. The other issue that I had, even though I swapped out the chain ring, it is a Race Face 30. By the way, I love a one by, and I specifically chose it because I didn't want the chain jumping or a derailleur here because I was by myself going in the backcountry, maybe not seeing people for, it could have been a week, I don't know. I, I mean, I was just going into the raw atmosphere, so I wanted something that had less components to break or to have rocks hit or even that the aspect that this has to jump to the other chain ring this is these are my personal choices i'm sure there's arguments well you could do the la la so i lost some gears by that by that choice going with a one by this is the 30t it comes with a 36 by swapping it out i actually gained more gears on climbs with a 36t on here i could not get up steeper climbs Okay, this is with no bags on my bike. This gave me about, I'm gonna say maybe three more gears on the climbs, but on the flats, I spun out. So I just sat there on my bike and let it coast. It wasn't that big of a deal. And yes, you could always swap this out or you could get a two by or you could do whatever you want. But 
I highly, highly recommend before you get a bike, you better put some weight on your bike and take it for a ride on some steep terrain and on some rocky terrain and see how the gearing will work for you. You don't want to get stuck with not enough gears to get up climbs. You'd be pushing your bike a lot. you could be doing a lot of hike a bike. The other thing that I found to be really crucial, having uh, attachments on the front fork. That's where I put my tent, my two green sacks. And it was, they were soft, so it was not super heavy, nothing clanging when I was hitting stuff. I don't know what I would have done without that extra space. So if you're gonna be going on these trips, if you're doing bike packing, bike touring, I highly recommend looking for a bike with the front fork attachments. I found a lot of bikes that were amazing. They would have worked perfect, but they didn't have the front fork attachments. So I was like, okay, well, it's two that really sucked. So that's it. I hope my review helped you or totally confused you. <laughs>